Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. Where we're diving right back into Elite Zoo North with the 90th episode. 9-0, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost at our uh, opening for a new zoo. It's wild to think episode 100 is just 10 episodes away. Um, and if we manage to maintain our schedule between now and then with three episodes a week. Three times three is nine. So that's three weeks and a bit uh, before Elite Zoo South opens. I think that's pretty much uh, set in stone as the plan. Elite Zoo South is what we're going to do. I think the way I'm going to position it based on a great set of suggestions I received in the comments a couple of sessions ago is I might uh, go ahead and call it you know, episode one onwards or like season two, episode one. So season one was 100 episodes of Elite Zoo North. Season 2 is going to be, you know, X episodes of bouncing between Elite Zoo South and Elite Zoo North. Obviously, like I've said countless times, and again, I want to, I, I can't stress this enough, I think, uh, we are not going to be abandoning Elite Zoo North when we open South. Uh, we will still be coming back and adding more animals, making more, you know, uh, decorative changes, aesthetic changes, and updates and things like that. So don't worry about that, but of course, we'll be focusing on the new zoo with, uh, supplementary episodes and stuff dealing with this what will eventually start to be referred to as the old zoo i suppose oh it's so weird i'm still getting over the fact it's it's a big change you know it's a big change uh and the attachment is real for sure with the uh with elite zoo north now i want to mention folks as always if you've been enjoying the series and you'd like to see it continue please don't hesitate to keep letting me know. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. It makes such a big difference. And I'm hoping that with the beginning of Elite Zoo South, with season two, if you will, of our Let's Play, uh, I'm hoping we can get more eyes back in on it again. I know a lot of folks were, are very excited to see a new zoo start up. I know a lot of us are apprehensive as well, but it's going to be exciting times. Uh, so I hope you guys stick with me and uh, we can we can keep the adventure going for ever <laughs> if uh, if some of your comments are to be taken into account some of y'all want this going forever and ever and you know what uh where i'm standing right now i wouldn't mind that either but yes do keep letting me know folks it does make such a massive difference and again i keep this to once a month at most i try not to uh, repeat myself on this topic but i do want to bring it up once a month um, folks, if you've been really, really, really enjoying this content on the channel and maybe some of the other stuff as well, if you've been enjoying uh, the entertainment value off of this channel and uh, you'd like to express that beyond the likes and comments and being a subscriber, uh, one thing I can humbly request is that you check out my Patreon or consider becoming a channel member. I'll have a link to my Patreon in the description down below. It'll also be under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. If you do not want to use a third party service, if you'd rather just keep everything together in one place, then YouTube has the join button that should be right underneath the video. Uh, and that again, think of it like uh, like a Twitch sub or like a Netflix subscription where if you're enjoying what you're watching, I mean, you can always get it for free. It's there's no obligation here. Don't don't ever feel obligated. Again, I can't stress that enough either. Um, but if you uh, if you feel like supporting in that slightly extra way, then uh, that is greatly appreciated. It, it does make a massive difference. Um, so uh, again, I, I do minimize how often I mention it, just every once in a while. Links in the description down below for Patreon under the eye at the top right corner for Patreon as well. Or there's the join button below the video. Now, if you don't see the join button, let me know in the comments, actually. I've been getting that a lot, and there's a link that works as well. Maybe I'll include that in the uh, video description too uh, today. Uh, so Patreon and, and the join button link will both be in the description. Anyway, uh, enough talking about that. I want to touch on one other thing that is relative, re relative, that's re related to that. Words are failing me right now. Uh, and that is that this, ladies and gentlemen, is probably... I'm doing my, my calendar math, right? One of the last times that we are asking and checking in for staff naming and animal sponsorships at Elite Zoo North. So if you're interested in being one of the named staff members, uh, and we have quite a few, if I flip by name, as you can see, we have quite a few already, but if you'd like to be added to this wonderful list of named staff members or... If you'd like to have your name on one of the sponsor boards, either existing or new, we've got quite a few. I mean, the uh, 
I think I think the first one we put down was the uh, the PFAL uh, sponsor boards over here. If the camera would just cooperate, um, if you're interested in doing that for any of the animals we have at the zoo right now, then feel free to let me know. Again, that is a perk exclusive to channel members and patrons. It's a little uh, extra that we do for our members and patrons. Um, if you are a channel member, I'll know. You just leave a comment down below. There's a little icon that shows up next to your name, and uh, I'll, I'll know, and I can I can implement it. Uh, if you are a patron, then shoot me a private message on Patreon so I know you know who's asking and what name you want associated and with what type of staff if you want a, a staff name or what which animal if you want to be associated with a sponsorship of an animal. Um, I already have some of your requests that I collected you know earlier in the month last uh, last month. Uh, so I have them noted down, but feel free to repeat yourself. No, doesn't hurt to be, uh, you know, to, to, to make sure that it's uh, come through. Um, but, uh, but I'll be probably doing it either next session or the session after that, but I'll be, uh, I'll be implementing all of them ASAP. Uh, and yeah, that'll probably be the last round, uh, at least of sponsorships and staff names exclusive to Elite Zoo North. Sorry, I, I, I can't get over the fact that, um, that we're about to transition to, uh, um, to having two zoos, not to, it, it, I don't want to say we're transitioning to a new zoo because again, we're not, we're not stopping working on the old one. We're just going to, uh, be working on both instead. Um, I'm going to hit play a little bit or actually, you know what? We can just change the time. I'd like to start things off with a time lapse today. So I'm just going to change the time so that we can dive into a time lapse right from the beginning. Um, and, uh, and then we'll do some management stuff afterwards. A little bit of beauty work today as well. I'm glad to see that many of you are very much interested in seeing beauty work get done. Um, because, uh, I, I very much am as well. Uh, I am drawing up those plans for like a little, uh, you know, village up top. I received some good suggestions as to what makes, uh, Brang Bang Croc Night Market. I'm like fumbling through words today. I apologize. Uh, I got a couple of pointers just like, you know, what really makes that stand out and totally agree with some of the, the points. Uh, mo actually not just some, I think most, if not all. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to be reworking that, uh, that corner over there. Um, but today I really want to focus on the other train station that I mentioned last session and also uh, truly capping off the Formosan Falls uh, enclosure because we, we've, again, we've made a lot of work. We've done a lot of work on it. Uh, we're basically done on it, but uh, there, are, there are a couple of small things left to do that would bring it from, uh, or that would take it from almost done, like a 99% done to 100% done. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to, to get that uh, capped off as well. And hopefully we'll be able to do that today. Um... But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and not waste any more time. I do apologize for the arduous, uh, long droning introduction. Uh, one thing I need to point out about me right away is that uh, when I was young, we used to move a lot, like uh, country to country. And uh, we'd always, when, we, when the time was coming up, we'd always be like, oh my God, this is our last Monday in, uh, I don't know, Denmark. Oh my God, this is our last time having, you know, peanut butter and jelly for breakfast in Denmark. It, we, that, it was just this funny, funny, I'm sure our parents found it annoying, but you know, they, they never mentioned it. Uh, it's just this funny thing that we would do. Um, uh, and it's, it's something that stuck with me all the time. So I apologize if I make a big deal out of this is the last time we're going to be you know, getting uh, animal sponsors in this zoo, or this is the last time we're going to be working on a time lapse or stuff like that. Just bear with me. It's a, it's a habit. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia involved, I suppose. But uh, anyway, <laughs> That's the last time I'm going to be wasting time with ramblings today, at least before our time lapse. Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, this one's a bit of a funny one because I, uh, I, I switch gears almost instantly. The initial plan was, um, to work on that station that I was looking at, you know, literally mere seconds ago in, uh, in, in video speed time. Um, but, uh, sorry, I just got distracted by this music. This is really fun music. Um, yeah, I, I was like, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and take care of Formosan Falls first. It shouldn't take too long. Just got to do a couple of bamboo constructs. I know exactly what I want to do, more or less. Let's just take care of that really quickly, and then we'll hop on back to the train station. Uh, get your bets in. How do you think that goes? Is, is it A, we do exactly what we planned? Or is it B... This takes much longer than expected. Um, yeah, take, take your get get your get your bets in. Um, anyway, on topic with Formosan Falls, one of the things that I felt was really necessary, and it was pointed out uh, by y'all in the comments as well, uh, we needed some coverings that uh, would protect people from the uh, 
the really heavy rainfall that comes through every once in a while, and also from the light drizzles, but uh, we wanted it to, obviously, uh, well, I, I wanted it to look like it belonged in the uh, region, not only the region, but also with all the other kind of stuff we had going, so I'm using the bamboo pieces from the South America DLC to get that started, and initially, I built this kind of, uh, I don't know if it's called a cantilever, if it if it's supported like this, uh, but this cantilever style uh, canopy that uh, hangs over from one side and kind of covers most of the uh, the path, if not all of it. I think it covers all of it. And I was pretty happy with it. Uh, you can see I actually start to uh, lay it out. And this was what I had in mind at first. Uh, but this is what often happens is like when I'm doodling stuff out or when I'm like kind of figuring stuff out in my head, um, I don't remember exactly what the pieces look like in game. So I when I, it comes time to actually building it, I go, oh, you know what, this isn't exactly what I envisioned because these pieces don't really work or fit or look like how I had in my head. Uh, which is maybe, you know, an indication that I'm doing it wrong, but I like doing it that way because that way, when it's, it's time-lapse time, there is still a bit of a challenge of uh, problem solving. And I think problem solving is fun to watch. I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong, y'all let me know, but uh, I think that problem solving is fun to watch. So you'll see that didn't really have the aesthetic or the look or the feel that I was going for. So I make a quick duplicate uh, and I try something a little different, but one, but something that I feel carries the look a lot better. So you can already see we've got now uh, a full on, you know, uh, roof or whatever you want to call it going on. The, the interlocking bamboo pieces look the part as well. And then like what I'm basically going for is, uh, is how I think realistically bamboo roofing like this could be made. So you've got your crisscross, uh, you know, bamboo, and then you've got your bamboo um, shoots, I guess. It's, it's a shoot of bamboo, right? Uh, that you've got stacked up um, on top. And, you know, in, in game, if there were smaller rope pieces, I would show each of these kind of like tied down with the, uh, the, the bamboo beneath it. But unfortunately, there aren't any. Um, and in fact, I adjust my approach, as you can see, because of that. I go, alright, well, what if, rather than it being tied together, the, uh, one bamboo shoot that goes, you know, up and down is, uh, you know, is kind of like, has got holes in it, and the other bamboo shoots go through it. It would be a giant pain to actually put together. Uh, but hey, this is an elite zoo. Everything we do is, uh... Is, uh, is a giant pain. There's, there's a tagline, everything we do is a giant pain. Everything we do, uh, you know, aims to, to go above and beyond. And, uh, and I think it looks a lot better. I think it's got that slight, I don't wanna call it haphazardness, cause that sounds very, it just sounds, it's, it sounds wrong, but it, it has that, it has that organic feel to it. It has that handmade feel to it. And, and when you do something by hand, you know, things are not perfectly aligned. There's a little bit of this and that going on. And, and that's why I, I like it. Uh, and I wanted to keep spots that were covered and spots that were opened. I didn't want to cover the whole uh, thing off um, because it, I think it's nice to have access to, you know, direct sunlight as well as shelter for those who want it one way or another. Uh, now that I look at it, though, I might adjust things a bit so that the benches are always covered or at least some of the benches are covered. Um, but yeah, pretty happy, actually, with how, uh, how all that looks. Like, that, that looks a lot more like what I had in my head. It's nothing like what I actually planned on executing but it looks more like what I had in my head. And I, I hope I'm communicating that clearly, uh, where like you have a, um, you have a feeling or an aesthetic in your head um, and you have a visual for it in your mind's eye. Sometimes those don't line up when it comes time for execution. That's what I was finding here. Now down here, I wanted to build some scaffolding as well. And uh, honestly, all I could think of while I was building this was the scene from, I want to say rush hour two. I guess it would be, um, where with the hole with the bamboo scaffolding. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen Rush Hour 1 or 2, I can highly recommend watching Rush Hour 1 or 2. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's all I can think of when I'm working with bamboo, either during this time lapse or when I was doing my uh, South American uh, DLC uh, showcase time lapses. That's all I could think about. But uh, yeah, using, using the bamboo scaffolding over here, uh, using that same kind of, in my head again, it's the same technique of attachment over here where it's not they're not roped together but basically one piece of bamboo has a hole in it the other piece of bamboo goes through that hole and you can create some really strong structures i mean again triangles are some of the strongest shapes in nature or triangles are the strongest shape in nature fun fact you can look it up that's why a lot of 
uh, you know, really heavy duty buildings have a lot of triangles. They're always made up a lot of supporting triangle shapes because of how pressure gets distributed across the, uh, the joints of a triangle. It's really interesting stuff when it comes to like that kind of structural engineering. Um, but bamboo itself is also a very strong um, wood, I guess, right? It's bamboo wood. Bamboo is really strong. It's a, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, building material. So I, I liked it kind of representing uh, construction materials of the uh, of the of the area, so to speak. Uh, and if I'm horribly off base, please let me know. I've not been to Taiwan, unfortunately, so I could be way off with uh, with the prevalence of using uh, of the use of bamboo there. But again, based on my research when I was building Formosan Falls. Uh, there are uh, bamboo forests and things like that, so hopefully I've uh, hopefully I've not strayed too far. Now you noticed a moment ago I started putting down some rocks. It's because I wanted the entrances to look a bit nicer, and this is where things I, I realized partway through the uh, the time lapse. So hold on a second. There's actually a lot to do here, um, and I didn't want to just again partial com do a partial completion when when I when I had time left. To, to continue the time lapse was focus on Formosan Falls, so I kept doing this. I kept adding some rocks here and there. I wanted to make this, again, this transition, I wanted it to feel a lot better. And those moss-covered rocks worked really nice on the other side, but they weren't working over here. They work nice when you can kind of see uh, the top and the side, and there's a bit of, like, green growth on the muddy-looking rock. But when it's just the flat top and it's just all green, it doesn't look right. So I had to revert back to the taiga rocks over here. And while it looks kind of janky and clunky right now, we go in and we finesse it to uh, to make it blend in with the terrain a lot nicer. And I, I quite like how it looks uh, in the end because it feels like you're entering into a space that was, you know, it, it was actually rocky and it's been blown out or it's been eroded uh, by nature itself. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe it was eroded by nature and then as a part of the zoo uh, construction, we, you know, we, we, we dug through it a bit more. But uh, it really feels like uh, something you'd actually see. So we get these in, we make them kind of high as well to make it feel um, kind of strong, I suppose, uh, as you as you get in there. Uh, but I do a proper kind of display of it after the time lapse. I'm, unless I'm pretty sure I do uh, to kind of show what I'm talking about. But uh, this, this time lapse really ended up being more about Formosan Falls than I expected. In fact, it ended up being entirely about Formosan Falls. We're coming up to the end of it. Uh, but I am very glad to have done that because I'm very happy with where it stands now. I feel like there's more to do, but as always, there's always more to do. We can always come back to all of our enclosures and all of our time lapses and make little adjustments or even big adjustments in some cases. Um, but I am quite happy. And honestly, close to the end of this uh, session, uh, there is a moment with Formosan Falls that uh, I hope you all stick around with or stick around for um, because, I mean, I'm really pleased with uh, with Formosan Falls and the work we've done today. And I hope you all are as well. As you always know, you can let me know down below. Leave a comment what you want to see more or less of, how you want to see it executed. But, but I do think these beauty passes are helping a lot. But that is today's time lapse done. All right, folks, there's a time lapse that was about not what I thought it was going to be about. Um, oops. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I was like, you know what? I'm sure I mentioned this in time lapse as well. It's like, ah, you know what? We'll, we'll do, we'll do this afterwards. This is more time consuming. Let's do the quick thing first. Um, yeah, that, that was not quick. It took a long time. Yeah. It was funny. Actually, I didn't realize how much was left to do at the, uh, uh, at Formosan Falls. So I'm definitely glad we came back, got those rocks in, got some of the canopies and stuff in. And you know, if I'm completely honest, I still don't think it's hundred percent done. I feel like it, it's, it's that same old thing, right? Where it's like the longer I look at something, the more I go, Ah, yes, I can change this. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we come back to this at some point, but I'm definitely closer to calling it done at this point, especially these like transition areas where you actually feel like, see, this was, this was absolutely huge, I think, because previously, as you'll recall, uh, it looked like uh, this, which is hideous and does not, why am I, there we go. Sorry, I have, I play this and I play Warhammer uh, sorry, Total War games on, like, similar days, and their keyboard controls are so similar, but also just a little different, like, rotation versus height changes for cameras are swapped, so, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> on topic, this was looking hideous, and so I'm definitely glad I put this down. It feels a lot more, in my opinion, at least, like your, 
uh, transitioning into something that was actually blown out of the ground or, you know, dug out of the ground by rivers like natural causes, wind and water erosion, and then you kind of you, you go into it flanked by these massive rocks on the other side. It makes me think of the Canadian Shield if you ever have the chance of coming to Canada and you go, you know, a little bit uh, further north, uh, like in small town Ontario and things like that, you will see where the Canadian Shield, uh, you know, rocks i guess have been blown to pieces so that roads and stuff can be carved through them so there's a there's a touch there of uh, of our locality i suppose in fact you know what if i recall correctly this zoo might be along that along those lines i'm trying to remember the um like where we are on the globe nonetheless one of my favorite things actually from the time lapse was when i was over here and i was trying to figure out like see if you can figure out where the rock asset starts it might be a little obvious now um because of my 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 time lapse and stuff like that but like I, I was i was thinking this was the rock asset and it's actually not this is the rock asset i really like how the uh, rock texture transitions from uh from a texture to uh to the asset so really happy with how this is looking actually and i'm i know i'm rambling a bit but uh it is often i find myself uh, my, myself unhappy with how the rocks have uh blended into our train well you know what actually one thing i'm not happy with is this section over here i'm just trying to figure out what to do I just noticed it. My apologies. So let's just. I wonder if we smooth it a little bit. If that does the trick, it's this weird. It's because we're right at the edge over here. I don't have full control. Uh, I could push it down and do something like this, where it's kind of like the rocks are jutting out a bit, or I could flatten it completely to the foundation over here and lower the rocks a bit. That's the other option, which I think is maybe the better option. So let's try that. Go ahead and do that and fix this up. Uh, definitely glad that, uh, we, we went into Formosan Falls here. And, you know, I want to say, actually, it came to mind during, uh, the time lapse. A couple things did, and I've already forgotten some of the things I wanted to address. So hopefully they'll come back to mind. Uh, but I noticed many of you in the comments of not just the previous episode, but the one, uh, before that as well, I think, I'm trying to recall now, uh, were very much on the same page as me about how, uh, how things have kind of changed over the course of these, you know, 90 episodes in terms of how we approach time lapses and stuff. Uh, I think one of the, um, oh, we've lost our pretty transition over here. It's still not bad though. Uh, but yeah, I think one of the things was, uh, is, or has been that we, uh, we don't spend as much time doing these like little quote unquote useless things so to speak i can't think of a better word for it it's obviously not useless if it was useless i wouldn't be uh defending the doing of it oh yeah look at that see it's like it looks legit all right um but yeah uh, many of you i think it was last session many of you agreed that it'd be nice to go back and just uh do some of these little little details here and there you know cap off some of these things and and some of the comments in fact were uh so poignant as to say like yeah you know some of the so some of the most interesting uh, stuff has been that stuff, and it has been uh, missing of late. And it's good to know. It's good to get your temperatures, basically, in the comments. So keep keep it coming, folks, especially because uh, the uh, the new zoo is about to come through. And it's good for me to start it off right, obviously, because, um, you know, we look back at the beginning. So weird to think about. All the way over here. Man. Wild. Uh, we look back at the beginning, and, and uh, you, can, you can tell... The different considerations i can at least i feel like uh there were a lot of different considerations back here that we were making like from the fencing to uh how the uh, the toilets got uh tucked away and stuff um which we still do a fair bit of but a lot of the times we leave it for later and then come back to so i don't know just uh me rambling again i suppose uh anyway uh so what is next i mean there's so much to do next session i definitely want to uh I mean, maybe next session we finally go back up there. Maybe next session we try to complete uh, both the uh, little Russian village as well as our little, what's going to be our Southeast Asian village over here. Going to go for a more uh, bamboo uh, village kind of a look here, I think. Like, what have we got going in this Southeast Asia section, right? We've got the uh, Bangkok market. Oh, I, yeah, definitely going with the bamboo up there. Because um, we've got over here, we've kind of got the corrugated uh card no, card <laughs> can you imagine having a corrugated cardboard roof uh in one of the like rainiest parts of the world a monsoon comes through and your roof just soaks through <laughs> um no uh sorry corrugated steel right plastic 
sheets is all it says. It's got to be steel sheets uh, or some form of metal. So corrugated steel, I'm going to say. Uh, we've got our, uh, you know, historical um, stone constructs. And I think the, uh, the the bamboo aesthetic is certainly missing. So it'd be nice to, to get that in here. Uh, and again, funnily enough, this is all South... Uh, sorry, this is all, yeah, South American uh, DLC stuff. But uh, it, it really works nicely for... Um, a lot of East Asian and Southeast Asian things as well. So yeah, definitely gonna do a bit more of that. Uh, next session, maybe I yeah, will get the um, these uh, these complexes completed. Uh, now, a couple of things I want to address right off the bat as far as animal management. I need to get some more macaque uh, because I believe their adult count needs to be six, and I've only got what four, right? And there are there's a lot of like um. There, there's there's a lot to be said about having like just taking care of that sooner rather than later because I don't want to wait for them to grow into adults. Where are they? There we go. <laughs> I remember I remember them being here at the end of the last uh, session. So we've got let me sorry I need to check over here first real quick. We have got grade two food quality for one. We've got one two three four adults, two males two females. Uh, let's take a look at their zoopedia. Another thing I want to get back to doing more of, especially as we get to our new zoo, is reading through zoopedia more often. I enjoy doing that a lot. I still do that. Um, but there was a time when we would read through zoopedia, social needs, reproduction, and everything, and just kind of keep all that into consideration as we built the space. Uh, hey! Oh, okay. Oh, I got so excited. <laughs> I forgot the last line was in your zoos, and I was like, oh man, we have one of the records? No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. I'd actually like to see if we've broken or held any ro records. Surely we've held some, right? What about our, our tortoises? Pardon the minor distraction here. Ah, uh, nothing. Oldest size... Okay, so it's size and age. What about our tigers? I got. I, I'm. I'm on a. I'm on a roll here. So I just want to check. Oh, this might bring up the competitive side in me. I keep forgetting this tab exists for a good reason. Um, what was the other animal? I want to check the the wolf. The 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 timber wolf. Hmm. This might bring out the competitive side in me. Really, we haven't had. A zoo older than a zoo, an animal older than twenty two six. Hmm. Like a wolf specifically. Anyway, sorry. Uh I was talking about the macaque. The Japanese macaque is eight to fifty. Yeah. Up to seventeen males, up to thirty three females. Wow. Alright. Alright. Um and they are promiscuous matriarchal group with single alpha male. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves some more females. Uh, I take it this means, much like wolves, where there will be a leader of the pack, um, and then, but it's matriarchal with one alpha male. Interesting. Okay, hold on a second. Um, does that mean there's an alpha female and an alpha male, and it's just those two that mate? Okay, hold that thought for a second. <laughs> I just noticed the baby sitting here. <laughs> Buddy. I mean, that's just adorable. Um, sorry, yeah, uh, it was just like a tiny speck down there. I thought he was like, you see how he blends into the marking on the wood? Um, right, so I think that means one male, one female, that will be the breeding pair, um, and everybody else is just kind of, you know, in for the ride, I guess. Uh, so let's get ourselves some more females, and if, again, as always, if y'all know better, which I'm sure some of you do, let me know in the comments what, uh, what that, uh, what that means, if I need to approach things a little bit differently. Go ahead and flip this over to the Japanese macaque. I wish they'd introduce the search field over here as well. That would be huge. But it's okay. I know the alphabet. I can spell. I can go in order. Oh no. I don't really have that many options here. Kawa. From Frontier Zoo. I mean, I guess we have to, right? We've already got the alpha picked over here. So hopefully this isn't going to hurt our pool, so to speak. Let's get you into quarantine first, right off the bat, and let's also take a look at the uh, Arctic Wolves for the same thing, because they also need a bigger pack, right? And I believe, oh no, you know what we're not expecting? We saw, or we got the notification of, uh, of mating, but we did not get, it was not a successful 
uh, mating. And it looks like food has arrived. Yep, we've got some food here. I love, uh, love these animals. Um, where is the other one? Where are you, buddy? Where are you, buddy? Hopefully coming back for food, because they're both hungry. But anyway, I don't, I don't need both of them. I just need uh, one of them for the Zoopedia article, or page, I guess. And let's take a look at two to eight, up to eight males, up to eight females. All right. Very social animals live in family packs. Like, I need to get... Like, they're the same as our uh, timber wolves. Alpha male, alpha female, and then a bunch of folks along for the ride. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ourselves some more... Uh, uh, boys and girls, um, let's go ahead and go dad, right, Sicknik, right, yeah, dad, alpha male, and I, I guess now I do need our Adler talk. Now, actually, as I do this, something that I for some reason have allowed to slip my mind repeatedly over the last couple of sessions, we do not yet have a confirmed name for the, uh, Arctic Wolf enclosure, nor do we have one for the tiger enclosure, Siberian tiger enclosure, uh, which, I don't know, I guess I, I, it was another case of like, oh, we'll do it next time, and it kept happening, and now it's become, what, 10 episodes? Uh, so we're going to do, do it over two separate episodes. Today, folks, uh, drop in your name suggestions for the uh, Siberian tiger enclosure. And again, just as a reminder, Naming enclosures and, you know, food stalls and things like that. That is open to everybody. You don't have to be a, you know, member or patron or anything. That's only for uh, staff and animal sponsorships. Uh, so, anybody, feel free to drop in your name suggestions. And again, uh, I, I take a look at the suggestions. I take a look at the reactions that y'all have to the suggestions as well, like the like counts and stuff like that. So, uh, keep all that coming and uh, and I will pick a name out based on your responses and uh again if i have trouble picking one because often i do because the quality of name suggestions is just through the roof uh, i might get a little bit of a vote or something going uh for next time uh voting is going to be changing on youtube they're getting rid of polls the way they used to happen uh but don't worry i'll find a way life uh finds a way as it is so we'll we'll make it happen uh wolves right sorry got completely distracted there but yeah so names for the siberian tiger enclosure in the comments, uh, if you'd like to suggest one, please, because uh, I, uh, I I I really ought to get back on the ball with some of these things. It's good to see where all the cracks start to appear as we as the zoo gets massive, because then we know what to expect when we get to uh, the next zoo. Uh, we we know what problem spots to keep an eye out for, so we can address them or be ready to address them before they become serious problems. Now, there are a lot of really expensive options here. Which is... I mean, come on. 5,600 5, for that. And then 5,700 for this. They're so closely priced. Squeezing the market here. But that's that's okay. These aren't bad stats. Um, and we have a lot. Part of me wants to save a fair amount for our... Um, oh, this is a lot better. Longevity is a little bit short, but... Uh, part of me wants to save some conservation credits for when we, of course, um, get to our um, new zoo so I can get in some of the really nice, high-quality animals early so we can start making the big bucks right off the bat. Uh, the, the logic there being, you know, if we, for example, let's say, I'm not saying this is what we'll do, uh, but let's say we... The first animal we do at the new zoo is the lion, let's say. Hypothetically, uh, if we get really high quality lions, then we are putting ourselves in a situation where we can get a lot of big donations, uh, a lot of happy guests because they're seeing a very high appeal animal, blah, 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 a lot of money rolling in right from the beginning. And then that money is used to, you know, reinvest back into the zoo. So that's the, uh, the thinking there, um, which is why I do want to preserve some of the conservation credits because I would like to get some of those high-value animals right at the beginning. And I actually am interested in hearing your thoughts on what you think those high-value animals would be. Um, I've seen a lot of requests for a lot of animals. I mean, there's a lot of animals in the Africa zone for sure. The South America zone is very quickly going to get its representation because there's 
I said South America, right? I meant South America if I didn't. Uh, the South America zone is going to get its representation very quickly and very fully because um, they're, they're only, what, four animals, right? Four animals and an, and an exhibit animal. So that'll happen pretty quickly. They're all basically guaranteed a spot, but... Um, but uh, there's a ton of African animals, so picking the order of it is going to be an interesting thing. Now, the safari suggestion still lives, but obviously the... What I might try and do, it's going to be a very interesting challenge. It's going to be a very different kind of zoo, because we might try and make the core of the zoo be a, um, a, a, a ride in a 4x4 vehicle, where you get taken from massive enclosure to massive enclosure, including some small enclosures, because of course we can't put you know the lions in with the zebras or the giraffes or whatever. Uh, but the zebras and the giraffes they can coexist, so it, it'll be interesting. A anyway, I'm talking too much about uh, Elitsu South right now. Uh, I just wanted to get at the logic of saving some conservation credits, and we do have quite a few animals in storage here as well that we'll be trading out. Um, we'll do a mass trading session, obviously, before we make our way to. Uh, uh, to Elite Zoo South. Got ourselves two more Arctic Wolves. That brings us up to four. Still not enough. I'm wondering if I want to... I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Do I just, like, buy a bunch? Because buying four more is about 20,000, approximately, conservation credits. And we have a lot, but that's... I mean, that feels like a bit much. Uh, maybe I'll hold off for another... Um, sale uh, uh like one of our mass sale sessions uh which i'll do obviously before we go to the next zoo um maybe sooner rather than later just so i can come in and and buy some more uh, of these pack animals this is looking kind of ugly oh i know why because this used to be higher this doesn't make sense if there isn't rocks higher uh, and, and that, that uh, tangent about Elite Zoo South actually reminded me of the other thing I was going to mention shortly after the time lapse. Um, so one of the things for Elite Zoo South that we've discussed is the potential of an oasis in the desert. And what many of you have brought up, and I thank you for bringing it up, is that in the desert biome, grass and stuff looks absolutely meh. <laughs> I don't want to say it looks bad, but it looks bland apparently. Like it's the, the tones and stuff are pretty flat, uh, things like that. So I totally understand that that can get very... Oh, God. I can get very dry to look at very quickly. I, I wasn't even trying for that one. Um, and, uh, and in the meanwhile, m many, uh, many of y'all have been suggesting the uh, savanna um, uh, bio might be a better option. Pregnant? Yeah, let's keep you. Um, because it, you know, it could kind of work in that same way. And, and a lot of the animals from the Africa zone aren't really desert animals. Um, so there's that as well, which is a very, very solid and valid point. Uh, so maybe we head for something more like uh, a savanna type, uh, type setup. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I, I don't know yet, but uh, just throwing it out there that it might not be the desert oasis, but we might go for that feeling uh, in a different way. Uh, I'm going to have to experiment a little bit. What I'll, what I'll be doing is um, before we get to that spot, I'll be uh, experimenting in like some sandbox zoos to see what looks nice and what works nice, um, just like I did for Early Zoo North. In fact, fun fact that I might not have shared before, uh, before... <laughs> Before Elite Zoo North was a taiga zoo, it was almost a tundra zoo. Because I was like, before I started the Let's Play, again, I had a sandbox um, open where I was experimenting with the, how it looks in different biomes and stuff. And I was like, well, if it's Elite Zoo North, wouldn't it be funny to do, like, the bitter cold of Canada? And we'll go all the way north, and then we'll do a south, and that'll be, you know, a more whatever. Or whatever it might be, right? Um, but... Uh, when you actually build in the Arctic uh, biomes, um, it's really difficult because everything is covered in snow until you put heaters down. So you can't even tell where you've put a path down um, until you've got heat going. And uh, that was uh, that was a problem. I you know 
it's a fine challenge if I was just kind of playing on my own and, you know, fiddling around with where's the path again? But uh, I, I felt like, you know what, if, I, if I'm going to do a whole series about it, I don't know how people would feel about that as an aspect of it. And, um, uh, and so it went from being a, a tundra, I think is the term from being a tundra biome zoo to a taiga biome zoo, because in the, in the, in the taiga biome, you still kind of have that same, you know, cool, it feels like Canada uh, association, but at the same time, you can actually see things before you put heaters down. Uh, all right. So we've gone ahead and traded out our exhibit animals. Let's go ahead and actually trade them out. There we go trade you another 7.2k now it was pointed out that yeah the exhibit animals do not get carried over to your other zoos which makes perfect sense it's a good way to prevent you know earning money that way uh looks like the crocs have stopped blocking this for the most part i haven't seen it in a while now like the blocking oh it's so cool oh <laughs> it's so cool to see this in use and like man This is, uh, I'm, I'm really quite proud of what we've built here. Um, just across the zoo, we've got so many, just these moments that I'm just really, really proud of this giant temple that I don't even want to think about how long it, it had taken me to build this thing. Anyway, I'm, uh. Going down memory lane a little too hard right now. Uh, shall we hit play? I think so. We're waiting on a couple of uh, macaque to end up in the trade center. We are waiting on... Wait, hang on a second. Yes, I have them going to the... Uh, not the trade center, but the uh, the uh, quarantine, right? Uh, animal storage. So many animals to trade out. We'll do a session. I don't know about this week. Maybe next week. In the in the early 90s maybe uh all right so these two i've already got them going towards the quarantine and kawa yes yeah, yeah yeah all right well let's go ahead and hit play see what happens over here and keep an eye out for all the notifications that are going to blow up in my face um pretty sure i've got you moving towards wait how about that cleanliness where is this a problem Over here, this isn't even that big of a... Oh, okay, we got someone coming through to clean up, it looks like. So cleanliness immediately popped up. A little bit of poop here and there is not the end of the world, I mean... As I, as I said very recently, everybody poops, right? Animals are comfortable with having... ...poop around. Oh, <laughs> no, so cutie. Honestly, my thumbnail two episodes ago, or whatever it was... Uh, probably one of my favorites with the, uh, the dad and the, uh, daughter, wasn't it? Looking at each other. Hold on a second. We have another baby. Hang on. Hang on. What's going on here? Where is the, uh, entrance? There you are. Yeah. Must have had them at the same time. They're so tubby. It's so cute. Are you running up for food? Oh, and look at the... Look, it's it's neat to see people come through. I think a big part of... One of my favorite things in the game... Was, is, and I think will always be seeing people actually... Uh, interact with the enclosure. Um, not just the enclosure, I should say interact with the spaces. Uh, like what we just saw with the, um, with the boat. Right, like... People passing under that little uh, arch or whatever. Moments like that are just, you know, that's, that's why I went with what I went with, with Elite Zoo and like the idea of these Elite experiences and viewing platforms and things like that. Because that, that makes things stand out. I want to keep that up as we move forward. Uh, the Flamingos, I think one of the last things we'll do with Elite Zoo North is make this uh, an overpass. Like, it could eliminate one of these connections, I suppose. Don't know how much of a difference that would make. We've got the screening. Oh, you know what, actually? One of the things that was suggested, and I'll try it. You know, let's go ahead and try it. 
um, one of the things that was suggested is that I get rid of some more trees. So let's drop some of these. The reason this was suggested... Ugh, looks so much uglier without that one. The reason that was suggested is because apparently it can cause stress having too many too many trees. Um, geez, how am I supposed to drop coverage by that much? I mean, I guess I could get rid of some of you. I don't want to. There's like a variety of plants fulfilling a variety of roles. I could get rid of you, I suppose. These guys don't stay, but... We're, n we're, we're never going to be able to... I think this is why I gave up on this uh, approach. We're never going to be able to drop the uh, presence of vegetation by enough. We went from 40% to 38%. We have to get rid of a tree and and that. I mean, I could get rid of the trees at the entrance, but like at one point, I guess I could like move this over here. I'm just being. I think I'm just being stubborn, and I need to need to let it go. I need to adopt this to work better for our animals. I know I need to do that. Oh my god! Look at all these people. A sudden flood, actually. I'm surprised. And hang on a second. How's our grizzly bear education going? 17%. Where, where were we at before? Many of you have pointed out how impossible this, these tasks can be because it's a percentage of everybody that comes to the zoo. I expected it to be a percentage of the people that have come to the zoo that want to see the animal in question, but no. That is very much not the situation. All right, let's go ahead and move both of you up to the right spot here, Habitat 32. Good stuff, and we have Kawa ready to go in as well. Move you. It is really nice to have the, um, the station here done. Just feels so complete to not just have that loose kind of construct just plopped down. All right, um, what was I looking at? What's going on? Reindeer is about to mature. Adorable. Right. Or, uh, of course, Flamingo Park. I mean, this consumed us. Get rid of more trees. Like, I guess what I should do is check if that's a solution. And if not, we can bring back the uh, beautification down to 34%. Okay. Okay. Get them there. Get them there. What if I get rid of this tree over here? animals with their needs <laughs> and their desires for happiness um, I'm kidding by the way I do genuinely care for the animals well-being it's kind of the impetus for this entire let's play um god I can't wait until the zoos reopen still at 34% no way come on um what can I drop? What's the biggest offender right now? The Scavola bush. Alright, 9%. Right, maybe the screening isn't working. Oh no, who passed away without me even noticing? Wynette, no! Oh no. Oh, right next to... Get the fed over here. Another one for the memorial. Do we have a breeding pair here? It's so funny how you can hear the, like, the clip-clop of their hooves. Oh man, we actually are, uh, our females are getting quite old. Might need to bring a new air in or something over here. Multiple animals are stressed, no surprise here. I don't, I'll be honest, I, I don't think the uh, vegetation has anything to do with it. Crying, but I, I don't think it's going to do the trick. Oh no, come on, stop. Stop it. Easy solution. Release you to the wild. Alright. Peafowl, they're like a dime a dozen, right? Okay, so, what I was trying to get to over here was the removal of some of these bushes. It's like a catch-22. Uh, I mean, the other option, of course, is to get rid of some of these plants. 
that serve no purpose other than looking pretty. Apparently looking pretty isn't important. There we go. Go ahead and get rid of you as well. Alright, how are you doing, buddy? How are you feeling now? 33%. Oh, we're so close. So close. I don't want to get rid of the heart. I guess I could get rid of some of these. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make, but... Probably get rid of some of these. I don't think people come down here all that often. I don't think it's worth having these. And I can probably get rid of these as well, because I don't think the animals really come down here all that often. It's a nice, easy way to get rid of some of the coverage. 31%. We're close. What do you think that number is? 25%? Uh, I guess we could get rid of... It's starting to look patchy and kind of messy. Ugh, okay. We'll work once we figure out if it actually helps or not, then we'll work around it. Get you up there. So close. If that's 25%, then there's still a lot to get rid of. I mean, I could get rid of this entire fountain complex thing, right? I could just... Oh, gone. I really like how it looks. Or looked. Past tense, I suppose. But that even that's not enough. Wow. Wow, we really have to kind of rethink this zone, don't we? If that's even the solution. I'm going to be really bummed if it's not. Because we've uh, put a lot of effort into uh, into it as a solution. Over to you. What are we looking at? That's like a 25%. It is. Alright. <laughs> They're really loud animals. Do like their screeching. Okay. Get rid of you, because you're barely visible. Let's go ahead and get rid of you as well. Come on now. There we go. 1% <laughs> of the time. 1% of the time. We got this. We got this. Alright. We got this. Drop some of this stuff. We can keep it over here, because they like to go up there to eat, right? We provide them food up there. Not that they like to go up there to eat. It's where their food comes. Oh, look at that. That's actually pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen... The, um, uh, like, this feeding happen. Pretty fine to look at. That guy just walking in the middle, prancing away. This guy, too, just. <laughs> they look so goofy when they run. It honestly, it feels like there's a cult meeting going on. Alright, how do we, uh... How do we stress ourselves out this week? How do we stress Party Elite out this week? Oh, they're all getting their suggestions in. How about we just fake it? How about we just do it randomly? That seems to get him the most confused when... When our stress bars go up and down and... In no particular situation. With no discernible pattern. That's always fun. God. <laughs> We've been working on this for so long. It's like 30 episodes or something of, of trying to appease the, the cult of Flamingo over here. They're making me Flamingo mad. Hey. Hey. Okay, we're uh, going to solve this now. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Actually took to the air there. I think I'm onto them. Alright, 27%. <laughs> Enough of my ramblings of a madman. Honestly, though, like, this this whole flamingo thing has been... And, and I've seen some of you mention it in the comments as well, just like... Yeah, ever since I added flamingos... Oh my, it's not even 25%? What is it? Is it 20%? No way, that's ridiculous. I can't hit that number. This, this enclosure is too big for that. Okay, how about, how about now? It's going to be interesting trying to find a way to actually balance this out and make it look pretty. It's wild. 
is actually wild. Okay. Um, there's <laughs> multiple cult meetings going on. One up there, one down here. Uh, okay. Get rid of you. It's a bit more coverage reduction, I think, right? Watch, I'm doing the opposite of... Because now we're getting rid of screening plants, so... You guys are going home. Actually, hold on. These guys are, like, super happy. That was great. I hope the traffic home is okay. That's not my responsibility. What, why is that... A, <laughs> not my job. I need to just chill. All right, good. Quite a few people with their education being somewhat low. Maybe a better spread of some of these education boards is, uh... <gasps> Maybe it's not so necessary. Uh, anyway. Back to looking at our animals. I see a shadow. I don't see the animal associated with it. I mean, y'all see it too, right? <laughs> well, this explains the stress. There's a ghost. What is that? <laughs> um, oh, it's a balloon. Okay, I'm so confused. <laughs> It's a pink balloon too, so it matches the uh, the flamingo story. All right, um, back on task over here. I mean, geez, <laughs> I was about to say I'd be tripping too if I saw that in my enclosure, but uh, it's not. I'd be tripping. I was tripping. Uh, okay, twenty three percent. Let's see, right? Let's see. It's pretty barren looking, but but we can make it work. We can we can move stuff around. We'll figure it out if we have to. But if this stops their stress, I will be so happy. Uh, however, my stress level is going up because I'm looking at this hot mess. Uh, so please. Please. Just some short grass. Much prettier. Much better. In comes the rain. Good here. Not enough soil, not enough rock. Okay. Not enough soil. Not enough rock. Reduce the size a little bit. Okay, add a bit more up there. Get a bit more soil going. More soil over here, maybe. Nope, 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 nope. 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 I need to do that uh, round again to make sure... Hey, stop it! <laughs> stop it! <laughs> okay, we're good. Just like watching, like, don't... Don't you do it. Uh, I need to do another round of making sure my animals are uh, not able to inbreed. Gotta get the contraceptives on, right? Uh, sorry, where were we? Right, Flamingo Park. Where else would we be? What was I looking at even? Right, the uh, terrain requirements. Um, soil. Still needed, right. Touch of soil. Where Soil. There was some of the grass, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Alright. We're all set up. Everything is in the greens. Except for their genetics. They're not stressed right now, but, I mean, that's... Nothing. That means nothing. That means nothing. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. It might not look the prettiest right now, but we'll make it work. Uh, how are the other enclosures doing? The ones that we gave a couple more animals to today. Take a little peek, make sure none of our animals are stressed out. I mean, we have no red flags right now, so that's promising. Heavy rain coming through. Yeah, look at these crowds. They're not the densest crowds, but we knew they weren't going to be so dense so far out, right in the middle of quote-unquote nowhere. They are taking shelter from the rain. Some of them might want to pick up some umbrellas. Bamboo really looks quite pretty when it's wet. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at... Formosan Falls. Do we have any people coming down over here? Now this! This is absolutely... Oh my god. What I'm talking about. Ah, look at this family sitting down looking the wrong direction. <laughs> look at the view. Look at that way. Look, look that way. Look that way. Turn around. Turn around. 
I mean, this is something. Oh, this... This is something. Amazing. I, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. <laughs> yes, I've got a balloon. I know that feeling, man. Awesome. Oh, man. Alright, that makes me very pleased. Y'all are running because you don't want to get caught in the rain. Well, we have an info center up here, so hopefully they'll pick up some uh, umbrellas and stuff. Uh, the macaque we looked at, the Formosan Falls we looked at. Let's take a quick look at our Arctic wolves as well. The problem up in this zone is uh, we don't have any coverings up there. We've got people going through over here. This is actually a pretty big crowd, a lot bigger than I would have expected up over here. But that's good. Um, no walkers, though, I imagine, right? Yeah, we should build a covering for, for this. And we'll eventually build coverings over here as well, so people can view from up here. But uh, yeah, it's something that uh, missed that I that I that I missed for sure is to make sure that people are able to walk over there without getting drenched. Down over here, I think we see some activity. Yeah, people are coming through. Good stuff. Good stuff. This seems to be a popular viewing spot, which makes sense considering the angles we get. Oh hey. Have we seen them use the uh, little pond yet? Because we're seeing it now. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so nice. Alright, folks. Things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. Our animals seem to be happy. Okay, moment of truth. Is this a stressed out flamingo? Gah, gah. <laughs> no. No! I've given you everything! I've given you everything! <laughs> oh. Might have to do the overpass. I'm, there, there isn't even anybody nearby. There isn't... Okay. Look, let's do a little checklist over here real quick, right? There are people over here, I suppose, but they're really far away, right? They've been closer to people without this level of stress. Like, let's take a look at Buddy here. Right next to people. Doing just fine. A-okay. Buddy over here. He's pretending to be a person. Or rather, she's pretending to be a person. She's like, oh, what are you guys looking at? Let me look too. Look at me. I'm a person. And I'm completely stress-free. But Buddy over here, <laughs> middle of nowhere. Maybe it's a social thing? Maybe it's like, oh no, I'm all alone. I'm freaking out. I don't know. Uh, okay, so that's one thing done. No people nearby. I don't even know what the real... What what else there is to check? <laughs> Perfectly happy across the board with everything else. I just I it, so that this is why I question if a flyover or an overpass or whatever you want to call it will even help because it's a marginal difference in distance. Remember when Flamingo Park was pretty? <laughs> I remember. Anyway, folks, <laughs> this is where we're gonna call it a session. We, uh, we'll, we'll eventually figure them out. Oh, it looks so pretty when it's so rainy and stormy. It's like a little beacon of, uh, <laughs> perhaps ironically or unironically acting as a bit of a North Star, letting us know exactly what is going on all the way up there. We know exactly where that is. I kind of like that. Uh, folks, though, yes, uh, we are going to call it a session over here. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoy this rather beautiful, foggy, misty view of our zoo as we enter into episode, or as we end, I should say, episode 90, enter into the month of June. Hope you all had a wonderful May. I hope you all have a wonderful June ahead of you. Hope you all enjoyed this session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know. Leave a like. Leave a comment. As always, makes a massive difference. And as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis to keep us alive and running smoothly. Quick reminder that if your name is not on here, it's because I... Especially for patrons, wait for consent because it's not always public, uh, publicly shown. So please shoot me a private message uh, so I can get your name up on here. But apart from that as well, of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of you for watching. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>